Throughout Virginia, many public school systems are changing the way they work with students and families. Across the state, teachers and administrators are making focused efforts to build trusting, collaborative relationships to get ideas and insights about their students and how they learn. The challenges vary between rural and urban school districts, but many practical ideas can be adopted by all. Family engagement is not a new idea, but the current focus follows years when school systems rarely offered families opportunities for collaborating and sharing as partners. It's partnership that's the key. And if you have a good relationship with parents, if parents believe that their children can do well and succeed in school, if they believe the school is doing the right thing day in and day out, that's going to translate into some impact in, th in terms of student achievement in the classroom. This is part one of a three-part series on strengthening family engagement in Virginia public schools. In this part, we focus on building positive relationships with families and empowering them to take an active role in their students' education at school and at home. Um, when everyone is working cohesively together and the child knows they have their su that support, I feel like they feel like they can't fail because they know they always some have someone to count on, whether it's at home, at school, or outside of the school system within the community. Positive relationships and empowering families are two of six factors many school systems consider as they work to engage families. All of these factors combine to make up a comprehensive approach to family engagement in Virginia tiered systems of supports. When schools welcome families using dynamic, responsive methods, they set the stage for effective two-way communication. The goal is genuine collaboration with families in planning, decision-making, and implementation to support the needs of every student. Over time, school culture is transformed in meaningful, measurable, and sustainable ways. It starts with positive relationships. If you don't have a relationship with your boys and girls, your students, you really don't have a clue what's going on. And that, that means knowing what's going on in their homes, knowing what's going on in their little minds. Um, you want to know these things. For so long we've been going about trying to solve our problems without family voice and without family input. And I think as we begin to include that and make that a central part of our improvement efforts, we're going to see it really paying off for our outcomes for kids. The shift toward actively engaging families is driven by research that shows building a constructive relationship with families improves the academic, social, and emotional development of students. Families who support educational goals at home build upon the learning done at school. Ultimately, families and educators are communicating and working together and developing their relationship for the purpose of supporting that student. And it is more of an individual relationship basis where they're identifying what that support looks like and the goals of that support. So um, it could be different depending on kind of the kids' needs, the family's needs, but essentially it's all, it's all for the student. The social emotional development of a child begins at home and we're here to help, we're here to inform, we're here to provide resources to families so that they can uh, join together with us to make sure that this child is reaching her full potential. Engaging families involves complex considerations and challenges. Every family looks different. They don't all look the same way. And so we have grandparents and aunts and uncles and cousins and moms and dads and step parents all in what we call a family. And we want all of them to be engaged here at NES, whether they live in the household or not. Virginia students have always been diverse in racial, social, and economic ways. More and more, languages and cultures add diversity and challenges to education. And families vary in their willingness to engage, depending on their own educational history. Research points to the fact that people who have had bad experiences themselves in schools are often hesitant to come to the school building because they've had negative experiences there. And what, what seems to kind of change that is keeping in mind that it's rare you hear a parent or hear anyone say that they don't want something better for their child. Many school systems pursuing family engagement have family advocates, liaisons, coordinators, or other positions dedicated to nurturing family engagement. We realize we've got to help. How do we help reach the parents? How do we help them to feel like school is a place that they feel comfortable, um, that they're not intimidated by? How do we help them to realize the impact that they have? Helping families understand how important their role is is really critical. And, and then asking them, you know, what kinds of help, what kinds of information, resources, uh, training is going to help you to be best in your role. Family engagement is leading school systems to take action that addresses fundamental student needs that affect education, 
but which have traditionally been considered the family's domain. What we're finding is that many of our students aren't going to school. So if they're not going to school, why not? And we're finding that many of them aren't going because they don't have their basic needs met. Some of them need the basics like school supplies to get in the door. Some of them need to have decent clothes so they can have a spirit of dignity and pride like everybody else. Using family engagement to meet the needs of families and students fits well into the tiered systems of supports used throughout Virginia. Tier 1 supports are for all students. Classroom instruction is an example. Tier 2 supports some students, typically in small group settings that supply additional resources. Tier 3 supports a few students, often one-on-one, -on -one, to provide individualized resources. We will come together as a team and invite the families in as well and just seeing um, what supports are needed. That could be with academics, that could be with behavior with their children. But also during that time, oftentimes we will have conversations with parents and find out things that may be going on in the home as well. So therefore that will lead us to um, kind of understand why the child may be performing in a certain way or may have shut down. We have the students for about eight hours or so a day, but the majority of their time they're at home. So it's important for our families to understand, you know, what our initiatives are in the school in order for it to really be effective. I think that is key in anything that we do as a school system. I am not with that child after school. I am not with them on the weekends. I don't know what happens all that time. And we have to honor that parents are the experts. Explicitly saying, you know, you are the expert of your child. Help me, help me know you better as a family, help me know your child better, validates families as equal partners in the process of educating their child and helps them to feel respected and really communicates that they are kind of those co-equal members in this partnership. Trying new things in family engagement often comes with challenges. Working with families can involve having difficult conversations. That's why having a trusting, working relationship is critical. You always front and load with the relationship so that when you have to have those conversations down the road, you're able to have them in a meaningful way. If I've established a relationship with you and then I tell you something that might be a little difficult to hear, but you know I'm coming with good intentions, then that's a little different than this person I've never talked to all of a sudden coming, coming in and sitting down, sitting down in a very formal way, saying how my child is, doing, is not doing this, or a flipping it around, a parent coming in and saying, here's the things that I think the school is doing wrong. The feedback I have gotten that when you're calling and you have something difficult to say, that you're direct about it, and that there's also a plan about how to address. It's not just a call saying, like, this didn't go well, and then you sort of leave it hanging out there, um, but, and that you want to partner with the family. So I don't just blurt a problem or whatever I've got on them. I always open it up and say, you know what, I need your help with this situation or what's happening. I'm letting the parent know that I'm concerned about that and I need their help. I'm enlisting their help to help solve the problem. It's a partnership for the school and the parents to work together. It, I know a lot of times it does get put back on the schools because we say we didn't know, I didn't realize, I didn't receive that information. And there is, there's truth to that. But it is also my job as the parent to get on the website to check the Facebook page, to sign up for the emails and the robocalls, and when I'm not sure what's going on, to reach out and talk to the teacher or the nurse or the principal, whoever is the person that I you know, feel can best answer that question. The goals of positive relationships and empowering families are closely related, and each supports the other. And when empowered family members engage with schools, the benefits grow over time. This first grader is gonna be in our school next year, and next year and next year. And then when I went to the division office, it's like, they're gonna be with us K-12. So you know what, we could have a dysfunctional relationship with this family or we could have a productive relationship with this family. Either way, we're gonna have a relationship with this family. And so why don't I make it a productive one? When we really put aside all of the jargon and all of the education and that artificial boundary between school and home, and we just let that go, and we engage in a conversation about a kid, I think that that is a liberating moment for the teacher and the family.